Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson. This is Maker Size. In this episode, I'll be completing the cross slide support for the Shaper project. Now, this is a longer term project where I build this Shaper from scratch, mostly out of cast aluminum parts. I've also built a lathe out of cast aluminum parts, and both these projects have series playlists. If you haven't seen them before, you should check them out. Uh, there's a lot of information from the lathe project that appears in the Shaper project, the use of the lathe, scraping, lots of recurring concepts that really uh, you'll only have those uh, perspectives if you've seen the full series. So if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. Uh, in this particular episode, I'm going to be focused on the cross slide support. This is the horizontal piece that allows the cross slide on the shaper to travel left and right as the cutting tool is reciprocating and removing material from the top of the workpiece. Again, I used the lost foam technique to cast this part. I pieced together pieces of foam that I had uh, cut with a hot wire cutter, assembled with spray adhesive, Super 77 spray adhesive, and then I coat it in plaster of Paris. Then I embed that coated plaster of Paris pattern down into a bed of sand. and then I pour hot aluminum. It vaporizes the expanded polystyrene and the metal when it freezes is left in the shape of this part. Then I clean it up, I sand it, I cut off the sprue. I cast the cross slide support and then I proceeded with sanding down the inside channel. Now this is the part that mounts around the vertical slideways on the shaper. And I did that by using spray adhesive to attach sandpaper to a piece of coal rolled steel. And I used that to sand this channel. After I had the channel sanded, I scraped it. And it's a little tight working in there, but basically I got the pads that mate with the larger axis of the cold rolled steel for the vertical slideways as well as the side opposite the gib. And then I turned my attention to the pads on the side. This is where the clamps will mount. And I used my belt sander to get them close. I had a, actually a piece of quarter inch steel. Uh, this is a piece of six millimeter cold rolled steel. So I used the quarter inch, which is a little larger thickness and the belt sander to get it down close. Now I'm very close uh, and I've switched over to scraping. This is about 10 thousandths of an inch away on the thicker side and about 5 thousandths of an inch away on the side that's closer. So now what I need to do is scrape this down uh, and I'll scrape more times on the side that's farther away until I get it probably about one or two thousandths below the cold rolled steel that it will be mounting to. And that will give me room for shims. And then as the part wears over time, I can remove those shims, but that's what I'm shooting for. I've scraped down the tops of these pads to just about a half to one thousandth below the ways. And I don't have a feeler gauge uh, smaller than one and a half thousandths, and that one won't go in there. But the pads are definitely lower than the ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the pieces that I need for the clamps, and then I'm gonna drill them, match drill them to the casting, uh, install the gib, the gib adjustment screws, and get this thing mounted up on the front of the shaper.
this inner channel on the rear of the cross slide support facilitates the movement of the cross slide support up and down the vertical slideways which are at the front of the shaper and this is so that you can roughly adjust the height of your workpiece uh, for optimum machining. After I had the rear of the cross slide support fitted to the shaper I then moved my attention to the front of the cross slide support. This is where I use the again the sander, my larger 12 inch disc sander to remove the bulk of the material to get it flat and then finished it in by sanding on the surface plate using uh, just a piece of sandpaper laid flat on the surface plate and a figure eight type motion to sand down that surface to near flat. Uh, it does still tend to be rounded over so you have to finish that off by scraping in that part. That's where you print the part against a Prussian blue oil paint film on the top of a reference surface. In this case, it's my surface plate. Uh, that shows me where the high spots are. And then I focus my scraping efforts on those high spots and iteratively the workpiece becomes flat, at least as flat as the reference surface. And I cut a piece of cold rolled steel to length for the cross slide ways and I drilled, match drilled, enlarged the holes, tapped the holes and used a single fastener to secure one side of the cross slide ways to the cross slide support. I'm nearing completion of the Shaper project and one of the things I wanted to reach out and see if you guys are interested in is uh, continuing on to the mill. There's a number of things that I'm interested in doing. I'm really interested in getting into cast iron. I think cast iron is maybe the, the next project that I'm going to be working on is, is kind of upping my game casting wise. Uh, I have set a new Patreon goal uh, for starting the mill. Probably I'll do the cast iron first, but if you're really interested in seeing me complete the mill, uh, why don't you check out Patreon, consider if that's something you'd like to support. That is a good gauge for me to know that the effort that would go into that project would be appreciated. I then did the same operation for the opposite fastener on the opposite corner. Once I had those two fasteners in place, I could batch out all the remaining holes. Taking the cross slide ways off of the cross slide support and tapping the cross slide. And then countersinking the holes to accept the tapered machine screw fasteners that I use to give clearance for the cross slide.
in preparation for the next step, which is attaching the cross slide to the cross slide ways, I actually scraped down the front surface of this cross slide as it's attached to the cross slide ways. Uh, that way, the surface that I am mounting this cross slide to is perfectly flat. There are some variations in cold rolled steel, and I want it to be as flat as possible to ensure, you know, the most fluid movement of that machine part. I'm going to save the remainder of the cross slide way preparation for a subsequent video in this series where I focus on completion of the cross slide. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you really like this video, consider subscribing. I am enjoying the Shaper project and I look forward to seeing you next time on Makersize. Thanks for watching.